Thanks a lot, Neil. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm a Long Islander like you. I've lived in Woodmere. I've lived through all my life, uh, but I have been practicing law in the city for over 25 years. I'm currently a firm called Richardson and Patel. We represent over 100 public companies, but also represent early and mid-stage private companies as well. Uh, but I always love to tell this New York story, and if you've heard it, I apologize. Guy walks into the Bank of New York, and he says, I'm going on vacation for two weeks in Europe. I need to borrow $5,000. And the banker says, well, do you have any collateral? He points to beautiful Rolls Royce sitting outside the bank. The bank employees take it down to the parking lot underneath. They give him the 5000 He comes back two weeks later, pays back the 5000 along with interest, which is $18.27. And the banker says, you know, we're glad this worked out for you, but we checked you out and you're a multimillionaire. Why would you need to borrow $5,000? The guy says, how else can I park my car in New York City for two weeks for $18.27? It's good hate to the city kind of stuff. Um, so why did I write this book? Um, for 25 years, I've watched so many smart people make the same mistakes that other smart people made before them in trying to build businesses, including myself as an entrepreneur, buying and selling businesses, trying to grow businesses and kind of partnering with clients at times. And so I have, as Neil says, tons of stories, uh, which I had to be very careful how to mask. And none of my clients has yet said, wait, that's me. Um, and so there's no way you can really find out. But the message and, and, and the lesson from each story is the same. Uh, so I decided that I would take a look at what are the seven most important things that can go wrong in building a business, and how can you prevent them or treat them if they occur? And this actually started as a series of columns I did for Slate.com. And the guy at Slate was like, you should write a book on this. And I said, I just wrote two books. Okay, and I went and did it, and uh, Bloomberg Press was very uh, happy to take it on, and I'm very glad it's just been out for a month. So, what do I do? To, to you just the press the tab, the press the tab. The arrow? The arrow. I'm doing that. Oh, there we go. So, the first chapter in the book is called Are You an Entrepreneur? And without ever even looking on the internet, I asked myself, what do I think of the nine key personality traits? that make you the most likely to succeed as an entrepreneur. And I wrote these things down. Then I went on the internet. And I was surprised to find that a number of these were on there. Several of these were nowhere to be found. And a lot of people think other things matter, but I don't think that. So these are what I think matter. And it's not enough to say, I'm an entrepreneur because I've been laid off, and I want to start my own business. That doesn't mean you have the makeup to succeed. Or somebody says, I'm going to open up a Subway franchise. That's not who I was writing about. I'm talking about people who are looking to build something substantial and meaningful. So briefly, you know, the big dreamer. Those of you who remember the old show, The Honeymooners. Uh, Ralph Cramden, the, the, this, tar, this New York City bus driver who always downtrodden. Some great idea would come along and he'd say, this is the big one, honey. And it always turned out to be a disaster. And that what really mattered were his friends and his family. Um, but you need to have a big dream if you want to build something big. Uh, you look at, and you need to be able to do something a little different than anybody else is doing it, or innovative, and most importantly, meeting some unmet need in the marketplace. If you look at somebody like Bill Gates, you know he didn't invent the PC. He invented operating software, but lots of other people had that. His innovation was to make it available to everybody, rather than have it only on his own machines. <coughs> Richard Branson, lots of people had record labels and so on. He made it cool, and he did the same thing with his Virgin brand across the, across the world. But great technological developments don't always spell success. Some of us may remember something called quadraphonic stereo back in the day, when instead of stereo it was four. Well, nobody cared, and nobody bought it. And there are things like that through the years. Uh, 3D TV, there was just an article today Times saying how ESPN is now 
backing off of 3D TV. Great innovation, nobody cares. Or people don't want to sit with the glasses if they're thin. So you also need to be kind of a natural leader. If you're not the type of person that people come to for leadership, you probably should not be starting your own business. And you have the ability to make decisions efficiently and then move on. The obsessive passion and drive, many of you know what I'm talking about. You forget the clock. You live, eat, breathe, sleep this business. Macro manager, I really thought I coined that word and then I looked it up and I clearly didn't. Um, but it's obviously the opposite of being a micromanager. And you cannot be a successful entrepreneur unless you accept that the D word, delegate, is an important part of your makeup. Rational optimist. So you want to feel the best is right around the corner, but quell that enthusiasm with the preparations for difficulties ahead. A corollary to that, healthy fear of failure. Part of what drives me every day is this thing in my head going, when are they going to take this all away? Little fear of risk, which you think is contrary to what came before. But the best entrepreneurs know that the greatest success comes to those who risk the most. Controlling but not freakish. If you remember Enron CEO Jeff Skilling uh, before he was hauled off to jail, they said, are you a control freak? He said, no, I'm a controls freak, whatever that meant. And a true control freak will not be a good entrepreneur. You would think anything with the word freak in it probably isn't good. And, you know, but it's okay to have a healthy skepticism of the talents and motivations of the people around you. You may have a salesman working for you, and if you're not careful, he walks off with all your business. You know, Ronald Reagan used to say, trust but verify. And now I'm a big believer in that. Discipline, personal, business life seems sort of obvious. You know, yes, you want to do things to be healthy, but you should be aware that there's kind of the dark side of the passion and drive that comes with entrepreneurship. And that is, you know, kind of less favorable, risky behavior. So then we talk about the seven key things that can go wrong. First thing that often happens, where I've seen so many businesses fall, is when the guy is, or woman is building a business and then a new idea comes. You know, since, you, since entrepreneurs are natural dreamers, they're kind of like songwriters that just have new songs coming up in their head all the time. And so something new comes along, it doesn't mean you don't pursue it. The question is, when should you pursue it? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But it's kind of hard because these are the very people who ignored the advice, don't give up your day job. 